Hey what's up it is Dan or DMAD96 here and I'm back for a brand new video and like I said in my update video this is a brand new series and it is EA Sports F1 Manager released in 2000 based off the 1999 Formula 1 season. This is going to be the first of my retro F1 series and as you can probably tell it's going to be a little bit different because instead of being a game where we actually race we are going to be taking over as the... This is going to be the only live comp series I do on my channel of course apart from the GTA but that's a bit different because... That has to be live comp, so, uh, so without further ado, let's jump into a new game. So we have all of the teams and personnel and drivers and their suppliers as well that competed in the 1999 Formula 1 season. So here we have Arrows, BAR, Benetton, Ferrari, Jordan, McLaren, Minardi, Prost, Red Bull, Stewart and Williams. So like I said on Twitter, I have decided that I will be going with the Stewart team. And the reason why I've chosen them is because they've got a reasonable lineup. Uh, the starting balance isn't terrible, and you'll see why in a minute. They have a reasonable finishing objective, which I think will be easier to reach this team than compared to most other teams. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into our season with Stewart. So, we have an all change of Stewart GP. As you see there, they've en enlisted the services of DMAD96. Much is expected of the new team manager, and the team's put confirmed personnel including Rubens Barrichello and John Johnny Herbert, who occupy the main driver's positions. So here we have the emails, um, I'm not going to go into much detail because we just get emails from everyone working with us. But this is the important one, so this is from the chairman of, of the board of directors, and he will keep us inf informed of your objectives and performance as team manager, and will also give us our objective for the season which will be to finish 6th or higher in the Constructors Championship so a nice and reasonable objective for us to reach there so in today's episode there will be no race because I think that will just go on for a bit too much so what I'm going to do today is just give you guys a basic introduction of how this game works and what is to come in this series so here on the email screen you'll get emails from um, pretty much any of these uh, from personnel confirmations and sponsorship confirmations so this is the list of personnel we have different job roles over here uh, now you can arrange contracts with any of these for next season you can't have any mid-season changes and if we have a look as well for next year you can see all of the people who worked with the teams at the time so obviously we have Rory Byrne and Neil Oatley who designed the Ferrari and McLaren respectively. Uh, same thing goes to technical directors and the commercial managers. So I'm going to quickly explain uh, who this guy is and what their job will be for the season. So here is our chief designer for the 1999 season and it is Andy Le Fleming. And as you can see by his stats, he's not a bad chief designer at all. Actually he is one of the better ones compared to most of them in the game. I think he's the fourth best chassis designer in the game. So, if you are doing the Stuart career mode by Season 2000, you will have the 4th best chassis. So the Chief Designer's role is, as seen over here, sorry, um, there, uh, he'll design these parts. So he'll design the front wings and rear wings and all the aero parts for the car, and he'll also design next year's chassis. So you'll use his chassis in the year 2000. And this also means to say, for example, if we decide to get rid of Andy the Fleming, and we want to design someone else like, uh, for example, Rory Byrne, then we will get his chassis in 2001. If you couldn't tell already, Rory Byrne and Neil Oatley are the best designers in the game. But if you were to sign, let's say, Andrew Green, who will design your chassis in 2001, your chassis will be a big heaping pile of chassis. So you can assign designers to assist Andy Le Fleming in developing the parts of the car. So we're going to do that now. We go over here, and all you do is that if you put some designers on the parts as you can see the estimated finish changes so the more designers on the parts the quicker it will take for them to be finished now moving on to the technical director and here we have Gary Anderson so as you can also tell by the stats he is an I think he's an average technical director I don't think he's the best in the game but he's not terrible the technical director's job as you see over here is to supply the parts and manufacturer parts made by the chief designers. So they kind of work with the designer to get the parts made for the car in time for the race weekend. So, uh, for example, if we get more engineers on each of the parts, they will be made for you quicker, so you'll get more stock of the parts for the car. And over here, this is where the technical director also becomes quite useful. 
You can replace the parts uh, depending on how much wear they have or which model they are. So say for example if we get our second model of front wings in time for the first round of season we can get Gary Anderson to replace the parts on the car. Finally we have a commercial manager. So this is Rob Armstrong and I believe, have a look at his rating very quickly. Uh, he's rated third from bottom uh, so he's not the best. So next year I think it's safe to say that we're definitely going to be getting a new commercial manager. So what their job is, is based, uh, basically they're in charge of the money. So here we have all the sponsors. So we can give Rob Armstrong, if we do that now, we give him more assistance. We can put those assistants on the sponsors. So for example we're going to just uh, put another four more on Leah. So the more assistance you have on the sponsors, the better chance that the sponsor will want to arrange another contract with you. Because as you can see they, uh, they last for a certain amount of races. So let's say if, uh, if the interest is quite low they won't give you a contract. If it's quite high they probably will give you a contract. Uh, the commercial manager is also in charge of the merchandising as well. And I think um, what that means is a better commercial manager gets more merchandising offers. I don't think it's that important though because you don't really get much money for the merchandise. I think you just get like uh, I think it's between 10 to 35 grand. I'm not too sure. So now moving on to the drivers. So we have uh, three drivers, two race drivers and the test driver. So uh, we can arrange contracts for next year's drivers. So here we have all of them here. We have all the drivers that competed in this season as well as the, uh, the reserve drivers as well. So Nick Heitfeldt, uh, McLaren reserve driver. We also interestingly have Mika Salo who did compete in the 1999 season as a replacement driver for Ricardo Zonta and Michael Schumacher, if anyone can remember that. And then at the bottom we have these guys who I believe are people that made the game. They are the EA employees. Now what I'd like to do is arrange contracts with everyone towards the start of the season. I don't usually go after the 4th or 5th round because if you don't then you'll be stuck with most likely these guys just really really bad drivers as their stats as you can see are really low so let's move on to our drivers then so we have Rubens Barrichello as our driver one and Johnny Herbert as our driver number two now Rubens Barrichello is the better driver and, and of past experience of this game he will win you races if you give him the car that is capable of winning races Johnny Herbert's not a bad driver as well he's in, in terms of stats he's just off Barrichello but of course I just prefer Barrichello because he is the quicker driver and then we have our test driver who is uh, Uchano Bertie which basically I'll get onto in a minute because I don't really find test drivers to be that useful in this game and one more thing and this is about season 2 for this as you can see uh, we haven't arranged our contracts yet I will do probably after the third round or the fourth round I've got uh, a few drivers in mind who I would like to sign but if you guys want to suggest a couple of drivers that I could sign for next season uh, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below so now moving quickly on to the supplies you have engines, electronics and brakes so we have four cars of engines which are the third best you can buy as you see here these are the engines that you can buy Mercedes being the best and uh, Mugen Honda being the second you can buy. There are two other engines as well which are Ferrari and Arrows engines. Ferrari being the second best and Arrows being the worst. So here's our engines for cars with VF, an expertise rating of 86. So that basically means that they won't be as quick as the McLaren or Mugen Honda engines and they're also not as quick as the Ferrari engines as well. But they have resources of 100 which means we will get four models of these over the course of the season. Uh, the electronics I don't think they really make much difference because um, as you can see we have Vistian electronics the worst in the game uh, but if you actually look at them carefully all of them have a hundred expertise which I think means that they're the same rating of pace but Vistian has lower resources so we'll get less of them over the course of the year compared to Magnesi Morelli and finally the brakes um, again brakes aren't that important there's only three models of brakes of AP Racing, MR and Brembo, AP Racing and MR are just basically the same. Uh, Brembo seems to also have a hundred expertise but it's just resources that isn't as good as the other two. So overall in terms of the supplies it will be the engines that will mainly affect your pace, the electronics and brakes not so much. And another thing that I forgot to mention was if your chassis isn't finished by the 1st of January 2000 
then you will be sacked as well as if you go bankrupt and if your lineup isn't fully confirmed. So we're nearly done with the basics of the game, but this is the last section I've got to cover. So here we have our calendar for the season. So this is telling us uh, what to expect for the entire year. We have all the World Championship rounds and some test sessions as well. Um, now I recommend that you don't go to the test days because they're just there to wear out your parts and you want to keep those parts safe of course because um, yeah, you don't want to be sacks. However, I do find the point of going to the first one of each season just to see how quick everyone else is and I want to explain what you will see in a racing situation because I don't really want to explain that uh, during the Australian Grand Prix. You can also check the drivers and constructor standings and there's also a team manager championship as well. So this will be updated after each race and then here's our finances. So I think I've covered uh, the basics of this game really, of, w of what to expect in the manager side. So now we're going to go out on track and uh, we're going to explain what will happen in a racing situation. So here we are at the circuit to Catalonia and what I'm going to explain to you now is what to expect on a race weekend situation. So here we have the three drivers, obviously it will just be two for a race weekend, but the one who we're going to focus on is Luciano Berti. So the different categories you have here, this is a pit wall, so you can decide how many litres of fuel that goes into the car. So because it's Barcelona, it's not, going to, it's not going to use that much fuel, so we're going to leave it on 12. And then we have the fast lap screen as well, which tells how quick his lap is. Um, this screen means, oh, it's a bit like what you saw on the main screen, uh, you can replace the parts of each driver's car as well in case they are too worn out and we'll explain the screen um, later on. So now let's uh, go and send Luciano Berti out on track. So here we have our test driver out on track. So as you can see the fuel has gone down from the 12 litres that we gave him with and he is currently on his outlap. Now in a qualifying and practice session, that outlap will count as a timed lap, which doesn't happen in Formula 1 nowadays. So as you can see, we can watch him on the screen right now, or we can go to the bigger screen and we can watch him on the TV. So you can either follow a driver individually, obviously no one's out right now, or you can press the direct mode button, which will treat it as a proper TV recording, which is one of the reasons why I really like this game. So over here we have the order, so we can give our driver an order. So currently he's on hold position, which means that he will drive the car at racing speed. If we move him to push, he will just push that extra bit faster, but that increases the risk of him crashing out. And if you put him on risk everything, that will make him drive his maximum speed, but the chance of crashing out is really, really high. So I only recommend you use that option in a practice or qualifying session. You only use it in the race if you really have to, and, if you, and especially if you're like 5 or less laps from the end of a race. The last option is ease off which means he'll drive at his slowest speed uh, just to save the parts of the car as well and obviously he will uh, there'll be a small chance that he will crash. Uh, so yeah I forgot to mention that uh, the higher the order the higher wear you will get on your parts. So we're just going to let him finish uh, this lap and then I will move on. So he's finished lap now, we're going to put him into ease off, I advise you do that and then obviously press the pit in button and he will go into the pits. Now that he's in the pits, he will give us the feedback of the car out on the track. So he is telling us to soften the suspension substantially. Uh, so we'll do that, we'll put it down to zero and this can make the car go a lot faster. So as you can see his lap time is 1.32.9, uh, Nick Heitfeld's just beaten that. Um, uh, 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 other drivers will be out on track as well. So we will send uh, Luciano out on track once more. Don't forget to refuel the car as well. Make sure that the parts aren't uh, too worn, yet only at 1% in a minute. So he's back in the pits now, and this time he wants to stiffen the suspension substantially, which I don't really understand because he seemed, uh, cause his lap time was 2 seconds faster. As you can see, he's done a 130 now. So he's three seconds faster than the closest car, which is Laurent Redon in the Benetton. So um, that's pretty much it of what I've covered with a test session now. But if you're using this game as a guide, uh, at this point you can just basically just do whatever you want. You can leave at the end of the session, or you can just advance time, or you can even watch the guys out on the track. 
because I'm just showing off the TV mode now as you can see on director mode um, as you saw earlier it switched from Thomas Enger to Stephen Watson who's driving the arrows Thomas here Enger. So, back on. so that's pretty much all that I've covered on what will happen in a race weekend situation and now I'm going to move on to the next part of the video which will be a quick rundown of pre-season testing and we'll also give a rundown of the teams and drivers and their objectives for the season so see you guys in a bit with 1998 now over, winter testing for the new year has now begun. The drivers choose this time to get used to their new team and their new car. The circuit de Catalunya was the host of testing today, so let's see what changes have to be made to the 1999 grid. 1998 was all about McLaren, as the team took their first double since 1991 winning both drivers and constructors championships. It looked like the team to beat again this year, as test driver Nick Heitfeld led the way in testing in the all new Neil Oatley designed car. Defending champion Mika Hakkinen is up for the challenge of taking back-to-back -back titles, whilst teammate David Coulthard will be wanting to up his pace in order to show that he is championship material. Ferrari came so close last year, with Michael Schumacher losing out in the cruelest of ways thanks to the tyre blower in the final round of the season. He looks to reclaim his crown in 99, alongside his teammate Eddie Irvine who will be aiming to collect his first career victory after five full seasons in Formula 1. In a year that was hampered by poor luck, Williams lost touch of the leaders in 98. Technical director Patrick Head hopes that the signing of Ralph Schumacher will give him good fortune after a tough last season. The experienced Alessandro Zanardi has caught Frank Williams' attention after his success in the American Champ Car Series. However, it is Alex's first season back in F1 since 1994. Will he be able to continue his success from the US back to Formula 1? Jordan's fourth place in the Constructors' Championship has established them as one of F1's top teams. Team boss Eddie Jordan designer Mark Smith and technical director Mike Gascoigne have produced a car that could once again pull off a few surprises. Belgian GP winner Damon Hill is joined by Heinz Hal Frensen from the Williams team who completes a very promising 1999 lineup for the Irish team. Benton enter the new season under new management from Rocco Benetton. The Nick Worth designed car driven by Laurent Redon in Barcelona showed a lot of promise and retaining the lineup of Giancarlo Fisichella and Alexander Wurz could produce a few surprises this season. A third place in Belgium last year was a large reason why Sauber took sixth in the Constructors' Championship. John Lacey was the man who took that podium finish and has been retained by the Swiss team alongside Brazilian Pedro Diniz. Like Ferrari, the team didn't attend the test session, but team boss Peter Sauber is expecting good results from the new car. Despite a respectable seventh place in 98, Aris have since entered financial difficulties and have struggled to find a new title sponsor. The new car is just a slight update from the previous A19, still powered by its own engines. Will its little resources be a problem for the team as the season goes on? Nevertheless, the team's drivers are Spanish rookie Pedro de la Rosa and ex Tyrrell driver Toro Takagi. After two difficult seasons, pre-season testing shows that Stuart are the team to watch this year. The main reason for their strong pace is the upgrade from Ford ZTEC to Ford Cosworth engines as well as employing Gary Anderson as the technical director, moving from the Jordan team. Brazilian Rubens Barrichello is joined by two-time race winner Johnny Herbert. Could this be the car to finally give Barrichello his first race win in his seventh season of Formula 1? The Pross team enter their third year in Formula 1. And this year, they are sure that the car will be much better than their disastrous 1998 season. Olivier Panis, now fully recovered from his nasty accident in 1997, will be wanting better from his pointless 98, as well as Iano Trulli, who scored the team's only point last season. The popular Minardi team have always had little success in Formula 1, with the team's last points finish being in 1995. The experienced Luca Badura returns to Formula 1 alongside Spanish rookie Marc Genet. Lastly, the BAR team are the only newcomers for 99. The team received a lot of hype since announcing that they would take part this year, most notably from their signing of a 97 world champion Jack Villeneuve in an interesting move for the Canadian. Alongside him is Brazilian Ricardo Zonza, who has shown a lot of promise in the lower divisions. So here are the pre-season testing results and of course McLaren with Nick Heitfeld set the fastest time of possession three seconds clear of the rest of the field with Stuart UP's Luciano Berti being in the surprise second place position and Thomas Engram with Jordan three seconds slower in third. Laurent Redon took a solid fourth place Benetton with Patrick Lamarie proving that the BAR is quicker than the arrows of Stephen Watson and for some reason Bruno Junqueras couldn't set a competitive lap time at all in the Williams but with the personnel working at the team it is pretty certain that Williams will definitely not be at the bottom in 1999. Now only seven teams took part in this weekend's test 
as both Ferrari and Sauber don't have a test driver employed at the minute and therefore couldn't take part and whilst Prost and Minardi do have test drivers for unknown reasons neither team took part in the Barcelona test. That's all the coverage from the pre-season test at the circuit to Catalonia. Next time we see you it will be at Albert Park in Melbourne for the first round of the 1999 Formula 1 World Championship. Ok so that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave it at the screen now. Obviously there's going to be more news coming later on and I'll cover that at the beginning of the next episode. If not, I probably already covered it in the test session. So, the, uh, the first round of the season will be the Australian Grand Prix. So, that will be featured in the first episode, which should be out uh, between t two days or a week after this video has come out, which I still don't know when that's going to be out either. <laughs> so, here we have the Australian Grand Prix, which will be the first round of the season. Here's at the Albert Park Circuit in Melbourne. And obviously it's been the first round of the season since 1996. And the race lap record is set by Heinz Alfrensen in 1997. With a lap time of 1 minute 30.5. So we're going to see if that can be beaten in the race. Which will, like I said uh, before, will hopefully be out uh, between uh, either two days or a week after this video has been released. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little preview to what should be a good series on this channel. And yeah, uh, so if you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if, you, if you're new to the channel. Like I said earlier, if you want, you can leave suggestions for drivers that I could sign for the year afterwards. But until next time, guys, this has been DMAT96. I'll see you guys at the first round.